Matthew chapter 4 Jesus is baptized then was Jesus led up of the Spirit the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil so the Holy Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness so Satan can tempt him and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights that's a it's a long period of time yet he's God and he spent that time with the Father alone he was afterward and hungered there's the human side of Jesus God never hungered before until this is recorded God never needed food and God had never been tempted by Satan and when the tempter the devil the tempter those are names that show up in chapter 4 came to him he said Satan said if thou be the Son of God look, look at his questioning he knows who the Son of God is he's been in the heavenly places he knew from time began when Adam and Eve were failed and sinned he knew that this would be the one that would come to redeem the human race if thou be the Son of God now maybe in a human form but I doubt that Satan knows human since Adam and Eve and he's been eyeing this one since Isaac uh, Sarah was barren since Jacob Rebecca was barren this is the one that Satan tried to stop with all the mothers of all the children that are in the line of Jesus Christ command these stones be made bread all right this is for the flesh this is for the body you're so hungry do something for yourself Jesus and Jesus could have done it but it's funny because we take chapter 3 verse 9 and you think not to say within yourself we have Abraham to our father or I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up the children you know John the Baptist said you can raise up the nation of Israel why don't you just make some bread Turn those rocks over into some bread, will you? You're hungry. Go ahead. Nothing wrong. It's only you and me. No one's going to see. Do something for yourself. But Jesus, he answered and said, It is written. Uh oh, scripture. Let me get the. I can't see the letter. Okay, fine. Man shall not live by bread alone. Deuteronomy 8 3. Alright. Bread's not important. Food's not important. There have been many Bible believing saved Christians who have died of hunger and starvation. And they are absent from the body and present with the Lord. So bread's not important. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, he's trusting God. Job 23 12 Jesus is not going to use his power to please himself it's not about Jesus he knows he's going to the cross why would he have to worry about starvation Remember that time when he told them, all right, get in the boat, we're going on the other side. And the storm happened, and the disciples, man, they went into a panic. We're dying. Why are you sleeping? Get a bucket, start casting out water. And he told us that we're going to the other side. He had no fear. He had no scared. He wasn't afraid. He knows he's going to Calvary, and 40 days and 40 nights of no food is not going to stop him. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. Now look at that. Satan is guiding Jesus Christ. Isn't that a weird situation here? He taketh him up. Come on, Jesus, let's go. 
to the holy city, Jerusalem, and setteth him on the pinnacle, and that is a little tower of the temple. So they are at the temple in Jerusalem. They're sitting up on the roof. How many Halloween movie? I mean, how many Halloween? How many Hollywood movies have you seen where they're sitting on the roof watching the people? I can think of, of the Christmas Carol. I can think of the Wizard of Oz. There was a there was a case where she's up on the roof. They're on the roof kind of structure of the temple. And no one notices it. They're invisible. Isn't that a Hollywood thing? And saith unto Jesus him, If thou be the Son of God. Well, wait a minute. He's over here. He goes, If thou be the Son of God. He keeps questioning his title. Come on, if you're really him. Cast thyself down. Jump. Jump. Take your life, Jesus, so I can end it right now. You won't go to Calvary. For it is written. Now, the devil leaves out four words in this quote. He's typical of doing that. And you go back and search it. He shall give his angels charge consider thee. And their hands they shall bear thee up. Psalms 91, 11, and 12. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Well, look at that charge. That's a second advent passage. Come on, Jesus. Do something for yourself. Oh, you're not going to do something for yourself? Well, fine. I'll start quoting scripture for you. Do something you're supposed to do, but not do it now. And many men in the ministry have, have gone and jumped ahead of God and got themselves in the ministry and they weren't supposed to be. It wasn't their time yet. And he's telling Jesus, hey, I want you to do something that you're supposed to do, but I want you to do it at the wrong time. And that's a familiar tactic of Satan. Do it for yourself. Do it ahead of God's schedule. And this is another thing he uses. Not only the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. He gets man to be impatient. Then Jesus, unto him, it is written again, look, quote in scripture, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 6, 16. You better have the right Bible if you're going to challenge Satan as a lion in our battle. For our battle is not you know, it's not carnal. We have a spiritual battle. If you're going to have to take on Satan because he's coming after you, you better have the right word. Going against Satan when he's coming against you with a modern Bible is not a weapon. It's not the sword. It's a macaroni. Wet. Again, the devil taketh him. Jesus gives in to the devil. Alright, let's go. Up to an exceedingly high mountain. What mountain? Doesn't say. And shows him all the kingdoms of the world. Another place says for a moment of time. You know what Satan's rule is going to have? Just a moment of time. And the glory of them. So here's all the world. Here's all the Roman Empire. Here's all Native America. Here is all Europe. Here's all Asia. Here's all the Orient. Here's all South America. Here it all is. All the rulers. Look at them all. They're mine. And saith unto him, All these things will I, Satan, give thee, Jesus, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now there's the final one. There's the final thing he puts before me. I'll give you it all. Lust. I mean, excuse me. The pride of life. I'll give you it all. I'll give you the CEO of the country. I'll make you ruler of that nation. I'll make you the boss man. 
I'll even make you a pastor. You just fall down and worship me. You know how many men have fallen into that one? I'm not saying every CEO, every boss, every pastor. There's many people say, okay, I'll take you up on that offer. He is telling God right now, drop on your knees and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan. Ooh. Temp temper, devil, Satan. For it is written, there goes the scripture again. Thou shalt, that's a command. He's commanding Satan now. Thou shalt worship the Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 13 and 10, 20. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Notice how Jesus goes back to Deuteronomy. He goes back to the law. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, Satan's not going to do that. That will drive him away. Satan is no wise he's going to worship God at all. Then, de then the devil leaveth him. He's gone on that one. But he doesn't go long. He doesn't go away long. He shows back up that Jesus' life as we go along with Matthew. You'll see Satan pop up and get him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Hebrews 1 7, Psalms 104 4. Satan leaves when God when he is told to serve God. And then the angels came and gave Jesus food and water. Like he needed. See, he could have changed those bread that bread that those rocks into bread. But in God's timing, he took care of him. Probably better food. God may have gave him angels food. Manna. Something better than man. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison. Look at that. John now in prison. It's been over 40 days. See, now that Jesus is on the scene, <coughs> John is now off the scene. He must increase John says, I must decrease. That means John goes into a prison. Jesus goes about free. He departed into Galilee. So he wasn't in North. He wasn't in the Galilee region. He was somewhere else. On that mountain. Somewhere. I don't know what mountain. And leaveth Nazareth. That's his hometown. He came again. He came again. He came and dwelt in Capernaum. Which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, is areas in Israel, that it might be fulfilled, which spoken by Isaiah, which is Isaiah, the prophet, saying, "Okay, here's another prophecy, fulfilled in Jesus, the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles." Oh, look at that. There's a Galilee of the Gentiles and Jews. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. John chapter 3. John chapter 1. That's the light. Satan's been kept, kept them in darkness, Paul tells the Corinthians. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death Life is sprung up. They're dying. Light is sprung up. Here's Jesus Christ, the light of God. Now there's hope in the land. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Forty days. And then however long it took the temptation by Satan from his baptism. To say, repent. That's exactly what John was saying. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus has taken over the voice of John the Baptist. Is now carrying that message to all Israel. He's taking the message to them. John the Baptist, they were coming to him. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, 
saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers, so they're out in the boat. They cast the net, they're actively catching, trying to catch fish. They're working. He says unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, Jeremiah 16, 16. Come on, never mind those fish you got. I'll make you real fishermen. Fishermen of men's souls. I mean, after all, Satan is the serpent, the dragon, the reptile. You know what his people are? His people are fish. Not a Christian symbol. Come on, let's go catch some fish, Peter. But Lord, you're out here in a boat. Oh, I got some other fish for us to catch. The Jewish kind. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So they put the nets down and they go. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. So Peter and Andrew are trying to catch something. James, John, and their father are mending the nets, keeping them up good, keeping them in good shape, making sure there's no holes, making sure that they're ready for the next time. And Jesus comes up, he says, hey guys. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. So that, they left their dad. Why didn't Zebedee ever follow him? He stayed in the ship. He wouldn't go. And the father wouldn't go. So the boy said, we're going. Bye. And Jesus went all of, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. That's their meeting places of all Israel. And preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. He's not preaching the good news, the gospel that I died for your sins and I was buried. That hasn't happened yet. He's telling us, he listen, here comes the kingdom. Here's that weighted king you want. That's why they were all excited. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And the law stated, if the Jews were right with God, there would be no diseases, there would be no sicknesses. So when Jesus shows up and starts healing people, he's telling you the spiritual spiritual condition of, of Israel. It's a sick nation that needs a healer. Because if they were right, then they'd be living on the hog. Oh, can't say that for the Jews, sorry. And his fame went throughout all Syria. I mean, it would too. Check out this guy, man. He's healing everybody. Check out the message he's preaching. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases, weird kind of diseases, unknown diseases. How's that one? There are new diseases in Jesus' time that they don't even know about. And they're bringing all these people to Jesus. A lot of these people would have been unclean for Jesus even to deal with. But you ain't going to unclean Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And torments. I mean, pain, extreme pain. And those which were possessed with devils. Would you ever see that in the Old Testament? When did that just start showing up? devil possession of the nation of Israel God's people you don't see many devil possessions in the book of Acts when they start going to the Gentiles and uh, Corinth and Thessalonica and Ephesians and, and Colossia and yeah, there's, I mean there's a few of them that around Jesus time but they're all in the nation of Israel. This is how sick and perverted nations got. 
And yet there's a church in Hollywood that everybody is devil possessed. No, they're not. The place that you're living right now, you probably couldn't think of one person that's devil possessed in your land. There may be some, but here they come. And those which were lunatic, threatened by the moon, Luna, the moon struck. Their ailment of their body is affected by the moon. Where'd you ever see that in the Old Testament? Where'd you ever see that in Acts? Or Paul speaking about it? And those that had the palsy. Well, we got, we got the palsy today. And he healed them. How's that? For a testimony of who he is. Now, when you get these guys that get up, you know, you know, they got their coats, their handkerchiefs, and all that. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to imitate Jesus Christ. You know what he's doing? He's doing these signs because the Bible says Jews require a sign. Prove to us you are that Messiah. Okay, bring me the guy with the pulse. He's healed. Bring me that devil possessed Jewish person. It's gone. And not only, like you said, not only the Jewish people, but also the Gentiles. Jesus is showing these signs to the nation of Israel to prove who he is. To a sick and perverted nation that they are. Remember, they got the Roman government in there right now. The Romans weren't very good when it comes to gods and goddesses. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from De Deacopus, and from Jerusalem. Oh, look at that. He's, going, he's got news all the way down to Jerusalem. He's all the way up north Israel. This is how far it gets by. You don't need a television camera to get the news and get the mass to start coming out. They had no problem getting the word out back then. And Judea. And from beyond Jordan, there are people on the other side of the Jordan River. Hey, we we heard about this guy, John the Baptist. Man, he scolded out those people. He's telling them to repent. He's baptizing them. Now here's a guy who's preaching the same message. And he's doing more than John the Baptist by healing. So when a Jew looks at John the Baptist, he says, wait a minute, he's supposed to be a voice to prepare the way of the Messiah all right now here's the messiah here's the ministry and he's got great crowds following him so he's trying to show by signs who he is and it's working but as hard a heart we got that man has